Hi, everybody. Uh, if you watched the last video, you saw that I acquired this old uh, Philco radio and am going to uh, repurpose it. Um, if you missed that video, I'll put uh, a, a card at the end of this video. You can click on it and go back and watch it if you like. Um, I'm just giving you this little bit of a recap. I'm going to kind of take this chunk of video from that and go forward just a little bit so you kind of understand what we're going to do here. So I think what I'll probably do is I'll probably shave this down. I'll delaminate it till I hit a solid piece that goes all the way around. I'll sand it. And I think I might just paint that edge black. And, uh, geez, the grill cloth is still pretty intact. I wonder if I can get that out of there and save it. That would be cool. And the rest of this I'll uh, strip. I'll sand. I'll try to you know, get, I'll try to, you know, keep the black in here and the two-tone aspects of it, if, as long as it's not too hard to do. But it's not cracked or broken or split, really. Um, so the idea here is I'm going to remove all the guts and take out the speaker, the chassis, all the wiring, clean it up inside, and then take a, a, a modern-day... This is Alexa, and you see how cool she'll fit inside there once all the guts are out, and I like to wire up a little light inside, so it might you might get kind of a glow coming through the front. I may or may not keep the grill cloth. I really need to clean it because it's obviously anything this ancient, just so musty smelling, you know, but, um, you know, I'll try to keep this badge. The, uh, the old dial plate and the Bakelite knob is still good. Um, matching this Bakelite knob might be kind of a chore. But uh, yeah, that's what it's going to be. So Alexa will live inside there, obviously without the speaker in there and just grill cloth. You'd be able to hear any of the radio stations coming through pretty nice. And it'll look beautiful in the room. And it'll be cool to repurpose it, right? So I've seen a few people do this before, and I thought, wow, what a what a great idea! If the you know if the radio is rough, and uh, you don't want to try doing a rebuild on the chassis, and this makes it a whole lot more functional. I mean, the Alexa that we have here it turns our lights on and off. You know, uh, it's it's a library of answers to questions that you have, and all the musical options too. So that's a project. Uh, We'll be back with the first step. I gotta get this knob off of here first. These things can really be stuck. They can really, really be stuck. I mean, it, there's no set screw that I can feel. But it's been on there for a million years, so it's, I've never had one come off easy. Oh, uh, you don't need anything specific. I'm looking for something I can here is a, this is an old lanyard I'm not sure if that'll work well I know on old guitars I just take an old washcloth and wrap it around there and give it a yank and they pretty much if you can pull straight up straight away from it try to get it all the way down you can cross over if you have to and then just give it up Floors. All right, that worked pretty good. It landed in a it landed in a wooden bucket that I have around the corner, and uh, that's all that holds them on. It's a this uh, it's a, it has a spring that just puts pressure against this shaft, and that's it. The old bake light knob is off, so that should. I think everything is free enough in there. Should slide out.
Wow, it weighs like air. Nothing to it. So this is the dial face. I'd kind of like to get that out of there and see if I can... Oh man, that'd be great if that would come out in one piece. Oh, that would be fantastic. Look at that. Beautiful. Now I can see what I can do about reworking this. Putty knife tool. Perfect. Oh, it's plastic. I kind of thought it looked metal. So the next step will be to see how this stuff cleans up. I'll see how that cleans up. I guess I'll probably hit this with the vac. Not only is the paint war from where somebody was, this thing must have really been used. Because the volume knob, look at, even the wood, you can feel it. Even the wood is worn away from people's hands from touching it over all those years. Crazy, right? All right. Next step, I'm going to show you how I mix up my own stripper. And I kind of got it set up outside here on a table. Uh, let's run through the stuff that we're going to use. And I'll show you why I'm using it and how you can make some for yourself. All right. We got our antique radio here. And here's kind of what I use. Need a pair of rubber gloves. Some steel wool. This is zero. You can go probably up to three odd. But this will work fine. Um, back in the day, there, I don't know if I should say the name of the company. Probably shouldn't. Um, there was a furniture uh, refinishing guy that was always on TV. And uh, he had some pretty amazing chemicals that he used to, uh, to strip stuff. Well, you can't hardly afford this stuff. A little tiny can like this is $35. And it's enough to get through this project, but I make my own. I uh, found the shipping label for that other product. The shipping label shows, you know, what all the uh, active ingredients are in the order that they're used. And uh, I just found other products that have this, basically the same stuff. Now, I'm basically going to be experimenting with a brand that I don't know. Um, and I'm not affiliated with these guys at all. This is the brand that I've always used. And it's real simple. You take one of these, and you take one of those. Uh, this, I don't know if it works as good as the stuff I have been using. I don't know why it wouldn't. But you basically just mix it 50-50. have it. Um, the nice part is, is that the two containers it comes out of, this will go right back in those containers. And then you got maybe $8 for this, $9 for that. So for about half the money, you get twice as much doing it this way. Give it a stir. something on your eyes, have something on your hands. This table, I didn't want it to get wrecked, so I just took a hefty bag and stretched it out over the top of it. And uh, throw, your, throw your steel wool inside. Bring it out some, but you want it to be pretty wet. And compared to the original mixture of this stuff, 
Um, this has a lot more benzene in it, so it, it's gonna, it wants to evaporate really quick. And the longer you can keep it wet, the better it works. And you just kind of go with the grain. And it, it'll just melt that finish. It helps to just kind of let it sit wherever it wants. Just it'll be in the background, just working on that on that old finish. Got a couple of screws here. Don't want those to get this stuff on. And I'm not using a lot of pressure. Um, have some paper towels nearby. Because it's helpful to just pick this stuff up and make it go away. Instead of just keep reintroducing it into your into your solution. kind of see how quickly that starts to get that down there. Um, look at that. See how the how the shellac has popped off of that? That's the actual color right there of the of the natural wood. So you can see how close we are there. We're pretty much right on the money. This is I'm really gonna be curious because I don't know what they did here. If that's that might be a tinted shellac to get the two-tone look. So that might be a bit of a challenge getting that look back in there. And this isn't coming off so well and I, I, I can see right now that once it gets wet I can see it's painted. This is painted black. This along with these little ribs inside here are painted black. So let's, let's see what happens when we throw this on the face of this. Look how it just look at how it just eats that right off. Look at that. Just wipe it right off. It's amazing, right? stuff really works killer but what I said before as far as it being a lacquer or a shellac it's the only thing it's gonna work on it really won't work on anything else
I emptied out that old stuff. I put it in here, and this is the this is the stuff that I I mean this is working, but this is what I've always used. And I don't know that it, you know, since they're the same brand, if they mix better, I don't know. But anyway, um, I bought two of these. I bought one of this, one of the acetone, and the gallon jugs. And we did, I think it was 14 interior doors, both sides. And I still got a little bit left in there. Um, this is maybe 19 bucks. So for under $40, there was two gallons, where one of these in the name brand in the store was 35 one quart so anyway um, even though that stuff was dark and kind of crummy put it in there and hang on to it when this stuff sits on the shelf all the sediments settle and you can pour it out you'd be amazed how clear it is again and sometimes or, or you can just take like a coffee filter and filter it through there uh, I just I use this until there's nothing left so we're pretty much there I want to just get some of this uh, I don't know if you can see that, but this corner needs to be cleaned up. And I'm just going to be real gentle with it now. I want to keep everything kind of even. And keep it all kind of going the same direction. This is eating the shell. There is some shellac on here, but it's not really taking the paint off. It's uh, we are going to use something very thin, and I usually use a razor blade or a knife. But I just happen to have feeler gauge hand hang on the pegboard there, so I just grab that. Really, I've used a butter knife if it's you know something that I can lift up with the butter knife. It doesn't really matter what you use. And I'm just going to try pumping some, some glue in there. I'm the type of glue you, you know, there's so many good wood glues out there. Just get a, you know, kind of an Elmer's looking type of glue. This is this is Gorilla Wood Glue. Don't use regular Gorilla Glue though because it expands and it actually will push this all apart and kind of make it sort of a nightmare on you. This is, this is the correct Gorilla Glue for working on wood products. And I want that to stick so I'm going to be really messy with it. Do people even say that anymore? Lefty and righty? I don't know. And what you want to try to do is try to inject that in there. Really push it in. This isn't lifted all the way, so... I'm starting to get it coming through the other side. This even has less problems right here. The reason I'm using that trowel there is I was just looking for something flat that would not stick to the wood. 
So it was just handy. It was just laying around here. It was the right width, so I grabbed it. You can use whatever you want. Just grab whatever works. That's just a spot. Okay, guys, here we are, day two. Alrighty then. That turned out pretty good. So all I'm going to try to do here is, you can see where this is just broken and missing, you know, all kinds of the finished veneer. So I'm just going to take it back till it's a solid piece. I don't so think it's going to be too horrible to do. All I'm doing is sticking the razor in between the pieces of laminated veneer just to get all the way down to one thickness because it's all different thicknesses now because chunks are broke off the front and the back of it. Trying to think how I can do this so you guys can see this too. Not that there's really much to see, but. Slice this somewhere so I can see my process, progress or lack thereof. Anyway, now you can see that there's one consistent thickness all the way around. So, next is to start, uh, start sanding. Because of the way that's cut, it's nice to get into a corner here without, you know, having to tack everything else. So I just want to make that smooth. Next, I want to uh, I want to address all this in here. I'm using blocks for that, unless I might like this for the front.
This is 240, by the way. You guys ever use this kind of stuff before too, but these these work really good. Um, geez, even when I used to build street rods, we would use all different kinds of. Uh, you know, these are there's different degrees of roughness to these, just like sandpaper. So this feels maybe a little bit rough for that. Try a spot nobody will see. Well, maybe not. Might be alright. But boy, these can sure make things smooth. I like how sharp those corners are. Just get right in there. They're nice and thin. Look how nice that works.
to the next part. I've got two cheapo brushes. One I'm going to do the inside and the bottom. Throw it out. This one I'm going to use to do a coat around the outside. The reason I'm just going to use a cheap one on that because I don't want to, I don't want to clean my good brush for it. I'm just going to throw it out. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to sand all this, uh, you know, this part and do a second coat on it. So I'll probably let it go for a day and a half. So I'll make sure it's good and hard, good and good and set up. It's winter and it's kind of cool out, so it might take a little longer than the typical time for this to dry. I'm using it's a fast drying polyurethane, but you know. I don't want to put sandpaper on until I'm sure it's, it's as hard as it's going to get. Uh, I like to take one of these tack rags and just run around it real quick. I've, I've actually already vacuumed this with a vacuum brush. I've already done the inside. I use a different one. And I just got a little pail here, just a junky little pail. I'm going to set it on because the bottom is going to be wet. And since there's contact, contact on these three rails, I don't want it to stick to this. The, uh, the bucket will fit right across the middle like that. And away we go. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is the inside. And this has been sanded, and it's been vacuumed, and it's been tacked. And... Um, I'm not, I'm not really trying to accomplish anything here, but just seal it. I don't want any bizarre odors, although this thing doesn't, doesn't smell bad. The grill cloth smells bad. But you know how cloth gets, when it's a million years old, it gets funky. see if I got the camera so you guys can see. So like I said, I'm going to retire this. Grab my next one. Knock off any loose bristles. Just because. And I'm going to do the sides first. And the face last. My first coat I want to be really kind of thin. I don't like gobbing it on to where it's running all over the place. I don't want to deal with that. Four hundred grit. I'm just using these for a pad. I gotta hurry before the neighbor dogs like 
completely take over this video. And all we're gonna do is we just wanna knock down the high spots from the clear. We're not looking to take any, any stock off. I don't know if you can pick that up or not, but there's kind of a sag in the clear right there. And one right here. You want to get those out. Now's the time. clean it up. Alright, so we're back inside. Um, we gotta we gotta get all the stuff off of here from sanding. And um, I prefer this to start and then I'll use the tack rag tack rag like I did yesterday to pull the rest of the stuff off. The reason the reason you want to use this is there's a lot of little nooks and crannies you know, because that's all recessed. You want to make sure you get all that out of there, otherwise you're just going to be sealing and sanding dust. Because the tack rag's not going to get down into those little grooves. It's going to be pretty rough for that to happen. Hold your ears, this is going to be loud. And any dust that's on this surface can easily come up in the in the air currents of the room and be redeposited on whatever you're working on. So this will help keep it off the part that we're going to clear here. That's the original 1935 grill cloth, and this is what we found that we thought looked kind of cool. So, we're going to go through the process of getting that on this backing board. Look, this is no big deal at all. Oof, man, that stuff doesn't smell great.
All right, I'm just gonna run over it a little bit with my sanding block just to make sure that there isn't any residual glue. So we're just going to draw an outline a little bit bigger than what we need. And I'm probably going a half inch or so larger than it needs to be. Wow, that stuff is thick. See that but it's like a real heavy cord they've got running through there all right um, the manufacturer recommends just a white wood glue of some sort and just go around the perim perimeter of it stick it down Adjust it how you want it adjusted and let it set up for 30 or 40 minutes and uh, we can continue. I think that's as close as I want to get. I was going to stir all this around, but I think I'm just going to leave it. Okay, we got a few components that we got to put in here. Um, let me get you caught up on what I did do. Um, I put a, a grill in here. In, in place of the old dial plate, it's just so wasted. So I have a whole idea for that, which will explain itself coming up soon. Um, there's a lot of different ways I could have gone with that and a lot of different ways I was going to go with it. But essentially what that is, I just poked around and found some. This was a, a Rubbermaid desktop thing for files. And I found if I, the grain running this way, if I took a piece going this way and one going the other way and spaced them a little bit, there's a brass washer in between See that? There's a brass washer in between the two pieces of mesh, and it kind of makes for a kind of a cool pattern instead of just the little the little tiny diamonds that were on there. So anyway, um, that'll become apparent in a little bit. But I did that without your permission. Um, I keep forgetting to turn the camera on, so let me get rid of that. Um, the first thing I want to deal with is the original Bakelite knob. It's going to go back here, but I suspect, I'm looking in the camera just to make sure that you guys can see this. Um, I, I have a feeling people are going to come up and try turning that, <laughs> and we don't want that because it's just going to snap right off. So I am going to attach it permanent like through the cabinet. Um, with the help of some dino glass. So I'm gonna mix up a little glass and put it inside here. I might take a piece of scrap wood or something and 
run that in there too just to make sure that the screw has something solid to bite to and I want that mounted permanently I don't want anybody to turn it it's just a decoration but I it was in such great shape I mean it's it's just killer I just love it so let me mix up a little bit of this so mix a little hardener in there that's way too much hardener so I'm gonna have to work fast See how that works. Gotta wipe that off my antique screwdriver. <laughs> I have to go this way because I'm right handed. Sorry, I'll spin it around as soon as I get it in there. I'm going to give that about 15 minutes to dry because with the hardener on there it's a catalyzed sort of thing so it won't take long at all and then we'll go into the next part That worked pretty good. All right. See how that looks. That's looking pretty cool. Go ahead and put this in here. Right. Sure. Alexa, turn on antique radio. Okay. Alexa, can you find me some copyright free blues music from the 1930s, preferably guitar based, so YouTube doesn't ding me for a copyright infringement? Okay.